Now, you mentioned a fast. I've heard people say a break. I've heard people say detox from <laughs> social media. Have you done a fast? How long does a fast last for? Um, I fasted for 45 days. Where you didn't touch social media, look at social media? No, I, I just wasn't posting. Oh, okay. So My you assistant still, would post. So you were more I was like, still, I, See, I'm the kind of person who wants to know what's going on. So I, I've never really logged out and just not had anything to do with it. But I won't post to it. I won't go. I don't follow any blog sites right now. Um, it's just not something I want in my spirit. Like, it's cool to know who, what's going on, but a huge problem what I have with people and social media is that they begin to really wake up in the morning and check the internet for answers that they, they, they are looking for. It has nothing to do with them. So I'm at a place where if it has nothing to do with me, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Now, um, how did that fast go for you? It was hard. <laughs> it was very hard. Would you do it again? If I get to the point where I feel like social media is consuming me and I'm not able to focus or I'm not able to decipher reality from social media, then yeah, I will. But I've, I've learned to discipline my emotions and kind of control it. Now, what led to the fast initially? Was this something you said, I'll just take a break for a couple days and it led to 45 days? Or is this a situation where you said from the point, hey, 45 days, that's what I'm sticking with. I'm go why that number? Why not 30? Why not 15? Why not 10? Why not 5? Well, I initially started, I don't want to do a month. Um, it was right after I got my son. Um, I adopted a baby. And the comments that I was getting, it was just really overwhelming because People who don't know you and they follow you on social media, they want all the answers, but you have to kind of gauge what you give because you, you have to protect the people that are around you. So in this case, I was protecting my son. You know, everyone has an opinion, but no one has the answers or no one has facts. So it's like, okay, now I step back and I protect myself and my son. So I just, after, during that whole process of, me introducing him to my social media platform, it was really overwhelming. Like, who would give a stripper a baby? Or, um, you're too busy, what are you gonna do with the baby? And then I had someone go to the extent of saying that he was a rented baby, or I did it for attention. And the reality of things is that I have an amazing family. My mother's owned a restaurant for 12 years. My sister, uh, who has my son full time, this was a family decision. So without me saying, hey, Instagram, me and my family are making a decision to do this, I don't feel like I have to do that. I feel like this is what I did, and you can like it or you can keep going. So that, that's what led to the fast. And I was just really enjoying watching him grow. I took a break from dancing, and babies are amazing to me. I've never birthed any, but my son is my son. And it was just amazing to see his facial structure change. And then, cause you know, when babies come out, they look like <laughs> little aliens, but to see him growing and it was just like, I don't need to involve social media in this. And it was a learning process. And I learned that social media doesn't get everything. Now, can we talk about the adoption? Uh, it's real short and sweet. Uh, my boyfriend was murdered two years ago, almost three. I never felt like I would be in another relationship. So um, I felt like I wanted to love someone that needed just as much love as I needed because dealing with my boyfriend being murdered and then still being the queen of King of Diamonds, I had to just keep going. To this day, I don't feel like I grieved, but now I'm blessed with someone who allows me to grieve and have them there while I'm doing it and I can just keep going opposed to just keep going and keep going and my baby is like a ball of love I just love him so much <laughs> so this your son this is something that was a part of 
uh, your boyfriend? No. Was murdered? Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Even though it's really crazy, everyone says that he looks like him, or he, when he when he was born, he looked like him, and I saw it, I was like, this is so creepy. <laughs> but uh, no, it was a family friend, and I just didn't want her to give him up for adoption and not know where he was gonna go, not know if he's good, not know, you know, or wonder. I just, we just stepped up. I called my mom like, hey, ma, we're gonna adopt the baby. And she's like, all right. So this is not something you were just like, you couldn't have kids or nothing like that, not no, a health I'm issue. probably very fertile. I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just sure. <laughs> very, or I, I wasn't in a relationship. Like yeah. me and relationships were so far fetched, like being in love with someone and they're no longer here. Like it was more or less, let me put this love somewhere because I went through a phase where I was take like I, I bought a house in Charlotte. Um, I was taking in people in attempt to help them, and they were stealing from me. They were uh, just really disappointing me in terms of me seeing their potential, me wanting to provide this nest and give them, you know, the love and the the energy that it may take to develop their craft. I had one girl, she was an amazing pole dancer. I mean, amazing. It was just some things that she had to work on internally before I introduced her to the world because social media will eat you up and spit you out. So I felt like, all right, well, I'm gonna get you here to Charlotte. It's very quiet, it's very low key. You know, you could work at Onyx. I pull some strings out, you know, you can you can still work on your craft. And this is during the time I was building Mazani Pole Fitness, which is now my pole fit experience, my brand. Um, and I just wanted, I really wanted her just to grow with me as I develop it. And she was one of my biggest disappointments, hurt my feelings the most. So this was a, a family friend that almost like you were saving a life. Yeah, he saved my life. He, he definitely saved my life. I was, I was just going. I mean, it's hard to explain how I was even able to perform after getting a phone call. See, my boyfriend was murdered Memorial Day weekend. At the time, I was the biggest dancer at King of Diamonds. So I get the phone call on Friday. I still had to perform Friday. I had a pole class on Saturday. I had uh, to perform Sunday and Monday, and I never stopped. So I had a lot of misplaced anger. I had a lot of questions. I had a lot of issues to deal with, and I just didn't. So. When it got time to sit down and I bought my house in Charlotte, I had a salon. I sold my salon and I put the down payment on my crib. And um, I was at home and it was so quiet. And I think that was one of my first breakdowns and it just was like reality set in. And then a couple weeks later I found out she was pregnant and I was like, Let's do it. Like, I, I still want you to be around. I still want you to be a part of his life. You know, don't ever feel like if you ever want him back that you can't have him back. Just don't keep him from us. That was my, my parents' entire issue. If she wants him back, will she, you know, will you? I'm like, it's her baby. You know, I'm, I'm not one of those people who believes that it doesn't take a village. I know it takes a village. So right now, my village is straight. My mother, my father, my sister, family, friends, we're straight. Let's step in. And I'm from up north, so it's not, it's not odd to me. My mom has taken in several people and their family, so it, it just wasn't out of the norm. But when I put it on social media, that's when I found out it wasn't the norm. <laughs> now, okay, so when this situation happened of you adopting him, mm -hmm. um, was this brought to you as a as a as an offer like hey Mazani can you take care of, or did you like step in and kind of volunteer and say hey I don't want to see anything happen to this child in the wrong direction let me let me help help this situation out by adopting the, um, the son 
Well, it wasn't Mazzani because it's <laughs> Tierra. <laughs> so it was it was more or less like. Like basically, was this pitched to you, or no, did you step no, in? No, I stepped and, in. I, I see. I stepped in. I stepped in, but I, I I wasn't overbearing. I gave her the option. You know, I said you can still if you don't want to. You know, bring any attention to yourself or your situation, you can still do a private um, adoption with an agency, but understand that we're here for you and, and it's, it's all love. I see. And this was the uh, the dancer you were talking about? No, 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 oh, no, no. This no. is a separate thing? Yeah. Okay. She's not a dancer, she's a regular girl. Okay, so the dancer was just a separate uh, example you were giving yeah, us it about was a, how... it was just a it was just a, one of those things that led up to it. Ah, I see. It was I just one you. of those... Like I, I'm just I'm I'm giving so much love. I'm 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 showing so many different people this love, and they're shitting on me, and you know like they're really shitting on me. It's not, uh, oh I made a mistake. It was blatant. <laughs> Fuck you. You know like I'm gonna do this. Like stole bags and you know things that you that I I, I had already planned on showing you how to get of your own. You know, it was just it was it was one of the things that led up to it. Now, were you ready for this? This no. motherhood, no, and this no, 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 parental guidance. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's why I hit on my family a lot because they really stepped in. Even now, my sister has him full time, um, and it's a system. We just created a system. No one cares about titles. I'm not like, oh. He, that's my son, and he's only gonna like no. It's I'm, that's my baby, and it's my sister's baby, and my mom's baby, and my dad's baby, and like we really just love him. We just we just want him to feel love. People ask me all the time, are you gonna tell him he's adopted, or are you gonna like I don't know. That's not I, you're loved more than anything, and then that's another reason why I try to keep him off of social media because I don't want him to be 18 and Google himself or Google me and it's like, stripper, <laughs> like, no, like, I, I, I share him because there, like I said, out of the 50 people, there are 20 people who love Kai and they just wanna see, they're, they're proud and they know the transition and they know the things that I've gone through and they know why I went out my way to open my life up to this and they understand it and they wanna see him. So I'll post a picture, but I delete it. It's not that I'm deleting it because I don't want to share him. I'm deleting it so that I can protect him. And that's with anything, my relationship. Like, it's a girl to this day asks me every time I'm on live, where's your boyfriend? Are y'all still together? And it's like, yeah, we cool. Like, we're good. Like, uh, he's amazing. I'm, we're great. <laughs> Now, I know you've, off camera, you described yourself as an open book, but do you regret putting him initially on social media and posting about it, looking back with the comments and the negativity that you did receive? I'm sure you've also received praise and love and that sort yeah. of thing, but with the negative stuff, do you wish you would have pulled back on that or not put that out on Front Street? No. I mean, if I'm a peach and I'm the ripest peach, <laughs> Everybody who loves peaches are gonna love peaches. But if you hate peaches and you like plums, you're gonna speak about how you feel. I mean, no, I don't feel any regret. It's a learning process. Everything is a learning process. From opening businesses to even having babies. Like, it's, it's relationships and everything that I've done thus far, I've done, and I won't say that I've done it strategically, but I've been able to maneuver afterwards. I don't feel like I've done anything that has caused permanent harm or um, is detrimental in any way for myself, my son, or my brand. Now, have you coped with the death of your boyfriend? I have now that I have the boyfriend that I have now. I have because before I was just doing this comparison thing. But then when you deal with someone who it who you don't have to compare because they're amazing in their own right and you can just breathe, then it's it's just a lot different. But I I, I 
I deal with it. I cope with it. Self-coping, or did you have to seek some sort of counseling or some sort of therapy to? No, nah, self-coping. Mm. I've never heard of black people going to therapy unless it's like you have to. I mean, music is my therapy. I love music. Um, if I could sing, I'd probably be a singer. <laughs> I love music. Music is my therapy. Um, Janae Iko, Selling Souls, that was a big push me through um, right now. I'm really like everyday vibing to uh, black, or people say six lakh, but yeah, it's black. black. I love his like his entire album is just amazing. I, I, I think I deal with m music more or less than people. When you heard about the murder of your boyfriend, uh, where were you when you heard about it? I was at home getting ready to go to King of Diamonds. I actually didn't work that Friday. Um, I, 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 I passed out on my bathroom floor. I actually got a call from a girl that he was cheating on me with, and that's who ended up telling me. But even with her, still, it's all love. Like, I, I've learned, I've learned so much through his death. Um, I've learned how to live. You know, I've learned that people, even my journey, I try to be kind to everyone because you never know how you're going to affect someone in your death. You know, um, I've had people write me and tell me that they need advice about how to deal with it and how to, and, and it's just like, just go, just keep going. I, I don't, I don't necessarily remember like that night that it happened, but I remember getting a phone call and I just, it was, it was crazy. It was the craziest phone call I ever got. I didn't try to call and confirm. I didn't, I just laid there. I don't remember too much anything else except for the next day I woke up and taught a pole class. I told the girls at the pole class, like, you know, this is what I'm dealing with. Thank y'all for coming. I'm sorry if I gotta go to the corner or, you know, I'm just dealing. They were very warm and to this day, Miss Ash is one of my biggest supporters. I love her to death. She was right there and she still is right there. So I think that's the easiest part is 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 getting a call. Why Everything can else. why continue to work that weekend when something as catastrophic as that happens? I've had this tattoo for a very long time and it says life goes on even after love. And that was my, like I, I had to keep going. I still had people who were flying in to see me perform. I still had people who were uh, messaging me and telling me, you know, I can't wait to see you at King of Diamonds. I want a picture or I just had to keep going. And then on top of that, the day he passed away, he had actually made the deposit for my salon. So it's like, I gotta keep going. I got I got a salon to open up, and I had full staff of employees, and I just couldn't I couldn't just stop. And then my mom, my mom is one of the toughest people I know. She's like me times a hundred. <laughs> so I called her, and she just told me to keep going. Like you have to, you have to keep going. How long before you got into another relationship? A serious relationship after that like how much time passes on before you make a decision like that a serious relationship how, how long are you supposed to or how long did I well either or there's no time frame that you can tell your heart to heal from so as long as you're dealing with someone who's going to be understanding that you have this situation that you have to overcome and every day is a new day then you can have friends you can you know you can date but it's unfair to not tell someone what you're dealing with and then you break down and they're like well what the fuck is wrong with you and you're like i'm just so tired of just, like no like you have to you have to find someone who's compatible with your past even though you're moving towards the future and you're you're putting it behind you and, and you're like, oh, life goes on even after love. And 
uh, I, I'm going to be okay. You still have to give everyone around you and you have to give the person that you're getting in a relationship with, you have to give them the heads up that every day is not going to be easy. Um, sometimes I'm going to want to talk about it. Are you comfortable with talking about it? And um, are you comfortable with me still having these feelings for this person that's not here? And please don't be offended if I get into my feelings while I'm with like you. It's, it's just the, it's the person and it's the relationship that you have with the person that passed. If you are one of the peop one of those people who dwell on things, I would say just stay to yourself because hurt people hurt people. So as you're trying to find your way and you're doing this comparison thing and you're like, well, he used to do it like that, but this is all right. Like you'll kind of come off ungrateful. And I had those kind of issues, but it was more or less like this is not the person for me. This isn't the person to help me deal with this. This isn't the person to help me grow through this. And when you meet someone who is willing to grow with you through the pain and not really pressure you to get over it already, that's when you know. And you'll just know.